Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. Donald Trump, the self-proclaimed dealmaker extraordinaire, is finding the Korean peninsula tough going. For all of his claims of friendship with the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, Pyongyang seems no closer to giving up its nuclear arsenal. And America's strategic partnership with South Korea is looking increasingly strained too. Well, my guest is South Korean Foreign Minister Kang kyung Wa. Her country is currently out of step with both the US and Japan. So how vulnerable does that make South Korea? Foreign Minister Kang kyung Wa in Beijing. Welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much for having me. Foreign Minister, I think we have to start, because you are in Beijing and you've had meetings with both the mm -hmm. Chinese and Japanese foreign ministers, we have to start with your very troubled mm -hmm. relationship with Japan. I'm going to quote to you the uh, mm -hmm. words of a Financial Times newspaper editorial. They say, the world's been fixated on Donald Trump's tariffs on China, but a new trade war is emerging in Asia, this time between Japan and South Korea. Is that the way you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've seen that article, and I have to say that this uh, issue over trade with Japan has come quite unexpectedly, and I have to say in a very unilateral and arbitrary manner on the part of Japan. Uh, we are prepared to discuss uh, what the issue is um, and uh, keep this as a trade issue. But I think uh, the steps that they have taken has uh, caused a great deal of problems for our industries. And uh, I think uh, you know we want very much to engage with them in, in, the, in the consultation so that we can take things back to pre July 1, when they had taken uh, these steps. But, but if I may say so, uh, it, it's not clear to me that you really want to lower the temperature because the Chinese foreign minister said to you both, that is to yourself and to the Japanese foreign minister, please uh, resolve this issue quickly, get a dialogue going, lower the temperature. And you, in the same news conference, chose to say, and I'm quoting you, it is important to eliminate unilateral and arbitrary trade retaliatory steps, which was clearly a jab at your Japanese counterpart. So you're not really well, trying to sort this out. Well, we are, in fact. Uh, we have offered uh, to engage on the trade issue. Uh, it is unilateral, it is arbitrary, it is retaliatory. Uh, the Japanese rationale for introducing these trade restrictive measures have shifted. Initially, they linked it to their dissatisfaction over how we were handling our high court judgment on the issue of forced labor. Uh, then they f gave the rationale that they found problems with our export control measure and somehow uh, some of these uh, sensitive items might make their way to North Korea. They have clarified that it's not the case, but there have been some inappropriate cases, but they have not explained to us as yet what those inappropriate cases are. We have offered to meet uh, between our trade authorities to, to talk through uh, their issues and to, to see how we might address their concerns if their concerns are legitimate. We have not but had any response from that. Let us be uh, candid, Foreign Minister. This uh, dispute, and we can go into some of the detail, but let, 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 put in simple terms, it has revived some very old suspicions, even hatreds, between the Japanese and South Korean peoples. And we see people in South Korea talking about their outrage, boycotting Japanese-made goods. We've even tragically seen two people setting themselves on fire in protest at Japan's restrictive trade strategy. This is very, very damaging for what is supposed to be a crucial regional alliance for you. It is. Our relations with Japan is 
extremely important, um, especially given our need for collaboration and coordination as we deal with the North Korean nuclear issue, of course, in close consultation with uh, the United States as well. But I think the reaction of the Korean public to these uh, trade measures taken by Japan, you have to see it in the larger context of the relations between the two countries. As you know, there is a very painful past, and the past has drawn a very long shadow over the recent the, the, the relations. My government has said, let's deal with the past as uh, past, uh, difficult, but let's manage that. But let's move on these other areas of close collaboration. And, and Japan, as so far in this government, have not re responded to that. But if I may, that. if I may interrupt for a second, what you've just said is very important, but, but it, it doesn't seem to square with what's actually happening. Because when your courts in South Korea started in 2018 mm -hmm. to revive the notion that individual South Koreans could could seek compensation from the Japanese mm -hmm. for wartime uh, forced labor, that seemed to the mm -hmm. Japanese to run entirely contrary to the treaty you signed with the Japanese going back to 1965, which said that all claims had been completely and finally settled. You can't sign a legal document and then reopen the whole concept of compensation. Well, first of all, the Japanese themselves have also indicated that individual rights to claim have not been extinguished. That has been their position through the 1990s. They have slightly changed tune in the, in the recent years. But the 65 agreement is about claims on property rights, financial rights, debts and credits. What the court judgment the, uh, the recent court judgment has said that that treaty between the two countries stays. We're not saying we're breaking that or we were asking to renegotiate that. What the court judgment has said that the, the, the context of illegal occupation, uh, i.e. the colonial rule, and the war of aggression, uh, acts, illegal acts directly connected to that context uh, have not been uh, have not been covered by the the 65 agreement. So you, you, you think it, you really think it's healthy, do you, to encourage South Korean citizens to seek, uh, you know, here in 2019, seek compensation for the tragic and terrible things that happened during the Japanese colonial occupation? It, it really is worth reviving and digging through all of that, is it? Well, I think it's, it's not the government encouraging. These are individuals ha who are living survivors, uh, who have lived through that terrible time and personally experienced uh, the, the forced labor. You, you, you've heard the Chinese say, look, you guys, South Korea, Japan, must get together and resolve this because it's very bad for regional trade. It's jeopardizing the hopes for free trade agreement across the entire East Asia region. Uh, you, and the Japanese, of course, have put their restrictive export controls on some key goods uh, that normally are exported from Japan to your country, and we'll talk about that. But you, in your turn, do seem to be getting very petty in this dispute. For example, your government's just announced it's going to double the amount of samples and the frequency of tests and inspections on radioactive substances coming in in food and agricultural produce from Japan, a, a sort of throwback to the concerns that we heard after Fukushima in 2011. But this is 2019. Why are you suddenly reimposing or putting on new, uh, very tight controls on these Japanese agricultural and food products? Well, there is still concern on the part of our public about uh, the fisheries products and the agricultural products in the vicinities of the Fukushima uh, plant. Um, and I think, you know, we are, of course have, uh, have to listen uh, to the concerns of our public. It's only now that you're in a bitter trade war with Japan that you've decided you suddenly need to impose these extra tests. You could have imposed them years ago, but you didn't. It doesn't look good. No, we, no, no, I think, you know, wh however it looks, I think we do uh, our policy reviews and take steps in accordance with our concern for the, the perception, the public concern for their, for their safety and health. And given the release of um, a recent report on the uh, 
the possible releasing of contaminated wastewater into the sea. You know, we have asked Japan for explanation about this. I think we will continue to engage them on this issue, but that has raised a, a lot of concern on our public. And, and therefore, I think it's the government's uh, legitimate response. Just a couple more quick ones on Japan before we get to the whole um, mm -hmm. Korea Peninsula strategic but, issue. Uh, just, if I may, mm -hmm. on, on, on Japan, uh, are you now saying to the Japanese that, that not only economic ties, but security, intelligence and strategic partnership ties are at stake? Mm -hmm. We want to minimize the issues. We, and I think given the Japanese rationale now that the trade control issues are really technical issues uh, on the part of their export industries, we are saying, okay, fine, let's discuss it at that level and work through the technical issues. We've not had any response from the, uh, the Japanese on that. Obviously, evidently, it is tied to their displeasure over the our court judgment. This is the judgment of our highest court. We absolutely have to abide by that. No self-respecting democracy in a, in a democracy that abides by the rule of law and the independence of the court would do otherwise. So that is the situation in my country. The I Japanese position is that everything was uh, settled by the 65. And so we are trying to find a way forward um, that Move, that helps us to resolve this issue and we have thought through very seriously on all the options and, and we have offered a way uh, that has not been seriously even even seriously considered by Japan. So, so, we so Minister, remain committed to open discussion and consultations right. so, Minister, on where, all where, of these issues. Where, where does this end then? Because if one looks at the economic battle that's playing out right now, to be honest, Japan is a, a bigger, more powerful economy than yours. You depend on some key mm -hmm. strategic tech components mm -hmm. and materials for your biggest companies like Samsung that come, <clears throat> excuse me, that come from Japan. So frankly, outsiders would think that Japan holds more of the cards here than you do, particularly as your export uh, businesses right now are suffering already and this is going to hit them hard. You, the, the South Korean economy looks vulnerable. You look vulnerable in this battle with Japan. Exactly, exactly. I think, you know, we depend on Japan. Our, our trade with Japan has always been in the minus for us. Uh, and, and it is just the, you know, of all the export items that we get from Japan, it had been those three critical items uh, to, uh, that are uh, critical to our semiconductor industry that they put a restriction on. So, I, you know, it, to, to think that uh, a country that has so mutually interdependent, so much people-to-people um, -people exchanges and growing, uh, that they would do this without prior notice, without prior consultations, very unilaterally, and just three days, mind you, after the G20 in Osaka uh, committed uh, the countries to free, fair, non-discriminatory, transparent and predictable uh, trade, to have this on us three days later, I think is completely unacceptable. So we are asking through consultations, let's find a way to roll things back to pre-July 1. You sound very angry. We are. I think we are. This, you know, there's the blatant sense of injustice because I think Japan has not fully come to terms with the past. And so that has meant that the people, the living survivors in particular, who have lived through those difficult days has, has a deep-seated um, sense of injustice right. that they have not been given their due claims about the harms. All right. Uh, done to them. Uh, but to thank, have th them th this th th uh, unilateral... Let, if I may, yes. let me stop you there because uh, that y your position on, on the sour relationship with Japan has become very clear in this interview, but there is something else very important I need mm -hmm. to talk to you about, and that is the mm -hmm. uh, strategic and diplomatic position of your government with regard to North Korea and in particular Donald Trump's continued uh, effort to make what he has always described as the big grand deal of de denuclearizing North Korea. He describes Kim Jong-un, president of North Korea, as his friend. 
a man who writes in beautiful letters, and yet all of Trump's diplomacy, frankly, thus far, appears to have achieved nothing. Are you worried about the Trump strategy? Well, I think, you know, we're in a bit of a lull. Uh, I think the, and the lack of an agreement in Hanoi has been disappointing, uh, and uh, the North Koreans uh, have not been ready or prepared to come back to the to the negotiating table. The North Korean leader promised uh, President Trump at their brief meeting in the DMZ in late June that they will come back to the negotiating table. They haven't, uh, but indications are uh, that uh, they by now perhaps may be ready. I think there is a communication context between the United States and North Korea to, to set the agenda to set the date and the place for their working level negotiations when that takes place. So uh, yeah, I think to say this has been a failure or a disappointment, no progress has been, I think that's, you know, when you look at things on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-day basis, months-to-day -ba months basis, things look different. But I think if you look at in the larger perspective, it's a huge step change where, where we were two years ago. But, uh, but so I think we, we should take may, a deep uh, breath, obviously. Yes, I mean, we, a huge step change in that Donald Trump has given all sorts of diplomat, diplomatic prizes to Kim Jong-un, but he appears to have got very little in return. And in particular, you in South Korea appear to have been cut out of the entire Korean diplomacy. The, the North Koreans the other day said they will never talk to you again. They said that the idea they could have meaningful talks to you was um, would make a would make the boiled head of a dead cow laugh. So they're not interested in talking to you. And Donald Trump doesn't seem to want to talk to you very much either. He's much keener to talk to Kim Jong-un direct. So you, you seem irrelevant now. Oh, I, I wouldn't say so. I think, uh, you know, our collaboration with the United States at all levels is extremely close. And I think the North Korean challenge has, in fact, brought us even closer. It may not be visible, but I think the the number of meetings that my, the, my president and Mr. Trump has had, the, the phone conversation, my own uh, interactions with Mr. Pompeo has been extremely frequent and very close. So we do things based upon the a very close South uh, U.S. North uh, South Korea coordination. So the, the the for the North Koreans to think that we can they can cut us out of this is a bit ludicrous. I don't think they understand the reality. Uh, we also know that North Korea's diplomatic behavior is very unique, to put it mildly, and some of it is uh, quite unacceptable given but, uh, but, diplomatic But surely the point uh, is this, Kim Jong-un, if I, sorry to interrupt again, it, it's a difficult line, but Kim Jong-un has Donald Trump precisely where he wants him. He, you know, he doesn't need South Korea coming in and complicating that relationship. So the North Korean message to you guys is quite simple, unless you're prepared to ease uh, economic sanctions and offer economic assistance to North Korea and unless you're prepared to end your strategic military partnership with the United States North Korea has no interest in talking to Seoul so over to you are you prepared to consider North Korea's requests of you well you know, I don't think um, you know our strategic alliance uh, with the United States is something for the North Koreans uh, to to demand anything of or comment on. We are absolutely confident about uh, about the strength of the alliance and the strength of the day-to-day -day coordination. Um, I think you know you also have to distinguish between North Korea's rhetoric and what their internal calculations are. And I think uh, we, you know in all of these matters we share we, the analysis, the information uh, very frequently with with the United States. So the in fact, I think uh, in many ways the alliance is uh, stronger than ever. I wonder whether your words about the strength of your partnership with Washington will convince anybody around the world when we look at the reality of Donald Trump in recent days questioning the point of joint military exercises with your forces in South Korea saying I don't like paying for them we should be reimbursed for them and I've told the South Koreans that uh, then he went on to say South Korea has ag agreed to pay substantially more money 
uh, to the US in order to defend itself from North Korea, something which you then said actually hadn't been settled yet. So what's the truth here? Is there a big dispute with the United States about how much you're prepared to pay to have the US help defend you? Well, this is not a dispute. This is an issue that we will work through uh, in the spirit of the alliance. We have worked through 10 rounds of this cost-sharing agreement, and we will work through the next round. I think President Trump, we know his style, his tweets, uh, we read them very carefully, but we also looked at it in the long term, in the larger policy context of the United States. Well, uh, yeah, I but, think but hang on, you're, you're, you're being very diplomatic, Minister, and I understand that's your job, but how did you feel when Donald Trump, first of all, mimicked in a rather offensive way a, a, a South Korean accent at a private meeting, and then he was reported as saying, jokingly, it was easier to get a billion dollars from South Korea than to get a few hundred dollars from a rent-controlled apartment in Brooklyn. This is the man that you want as your strategic partner. Well, you're, you're, you're trying to instigate me, and I won't fall for that, and I will not comment uh, either way on the, on the, on the uh, words or the actions of uh, President Trump. Um, you know, I, I think his, in the overall, his, his determination and his political will has been instrumental, together with my president, to bring us this far on the, on the engagement with North Korea. Uh, but that, I think, is also then uh, supported by the policy establishment of the United States as represented but, in the State Department, in the Defense Department, and yeah, the National on. Security you, Council. But, Foreign Minister, you can only take your own diplomacy so far. When John Bolton, uh, Trump's national security advisor, that suggests in the future South Korea should pay all five billion U.S. dollars cost of US, the 28,500 U.S. troops sitting in South Korea, how do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Well, we, as we have not yet started serious negotiations, that's for sure. We have uh, their team, I think, in Korea for first round of initial sounding out, but the serious negotiations will begin in September. So we have yet to see where this leads to, but we will certainly uh, uh, go to the negotiating table on the cost sharing. Um, based upon our position of arriving at a reasonable uh, level that is acceptable to us, that is uh, that we can handle and th that we can pass through our National Assembly. Foreign Minister, we're almost out of time. Can you ever remember a time in the recent past when South Korea looked more economically and politically vulnerable. We've talked about the impact of the trade dispute with Japan on your economy, but frankly, strategically, you're in dispute with Japan. The North Koreans won't talk to you. Your relationship with Trump is, shall we say, troubled, to say the least. You've got China and Russia, which have ambitions in your region, which don't necessarily match yours. South Korea is in a lot of trouble. Well, we have lots of challenges, but I don't. I wouldn't call the, our relations with the United States troubled. I think we have our disagreements. All relationships do. We, but we are, are an alliance of 65 years, and we have been able to work through difficult issues in the past in the spirit of the alliance. We have our challenges with Japan. Uh, we have our issues with China and Russia. But it, we one fundamental goal we share is that the Korean Peninsula must be wholly denuclearized and that we must find lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. So we very much have that goal in our eyesight and deal with the daily challenges as they come. Foreign Minister Kang kyung Wa, I thank you very much indeed for joining me from Beijing. Thank you for having me.